Now that we've discussed correlation, we'll talk about the next piece of this, which is regression. The idea of regression is that now that we know that two variables are related, we want to be able to predict one of them given the value of the other. So last time we looked at things that uh, had the number of absences a student had in their final grade. So I want to be able to give at least an estimate of what the final grade is if I know the number of absences. And so this is the idea of regression. And we're going to do this with what's called the line of best fit. This can also be known as the regression line. So let's start with a diagram of exactly what this idea looks like. So here I have a diagram of a scatter plot and three particular lines that go through it. So my question is, which one of these is actually the best fit line? Which one will actually give us the best predictions later on? So how do we want to go about doing that? This diagram here is going to give us some idea of how we want to do that. So we have our points, which are observed values. The line is the predicted value. And I want to look at all of these distances from my points to the lines. And I want to minimize these distances. I want to, on average, make these distances as small as possible. And so that's how we're going to do this. It's also known as the least squares regression line. When we dealt with standard deviation, we talked about how when we found all the deviations and we added them up, we would always get zero. If I look at all of these distances and add them up, I'm going to get zero. So instead, we're going to look at squaring the values and minimizing that. And this is why it's known as the least squares regression line. Like I said, we're particularly concerned with linear things, so we're looking for this least squares regression line of the form y equal to a plus bx. So what we really need is to find these values for a and b. And this is technically how we do it. We multiply for b, we would multiply the correlation coefficient by the standard deviation in y over the standard deviation of x. And then a is the mean of y minus b times the mean of x. And these can still be quite difficult to find. So in particular, we're going to be concerned with uh, computers and calculators to help us calculate these values. So let's look at an example. Here's an example we looked at previously where we have the number of absences a student has and their final grade. So we had done the scatter plot and shown that this had a negative correlation before, so now I actually want to find the regression line. And like I said, for that we're going to use a calculator. So here's my graphing calculator. I'm going to click on the three dots and down to statistics. And for this, we see all these things that start with the word fit, and that's what we need. We can have a fit exponential, a fit growth function, an implicit function, but we're concerned with the lines. We want to find the line of best fit, so we're looking for the fit line. And after that, we just enter our points, just like for the correlation coefficient. So I open parentheses. I have 6, 82 for the first student. The second student had two absences and a final grade of 86. My next student, 15 absences, and a grade of 43. The next student had 9 absences, and a grade of 74, 12 absences, and a grade of 58, 5 absences, and a grade of 90. And then my final student had eight absences and a grade of 78. So now I have the line, roughly negative 3.62x plus 102.49. We can now use this to be able to make predictions. So let's say I have a student that had 10 absences and they want to know about what they could expect their final grade to be. So just sticking in the 10 for the x would give us the value. After this, I just need to work out this simple equation, negative 3.62 times 10, and then add 102.49. So we can predict that this student will have an average of about a 66.29. Of course, this is not perfect, and it could be different than that, but this is about what we should expect. Let's look at another example. Here's another example we had looked at where we looked at the number of cars a rental agency has in 10,000s, and the revenue in billions. 
So let's see if we can find the line for this one. So moving on to my calculator, I'll hit my three dots and select my fit line since I am building a line here. And then we start entering in our points. So open the parentheses. We had 63 comma 7 for the first one. The next one was 29 comma 3.9. My next one was 20.8 and 2.1. After that, I had 19.1 and 2.8. We then had 13.4 and 1.4. And then the final one was 8.5 and 1.5. So here, our equation was about 0.11x plus 0 0.40 once we do rounding to two decimals. And we can once again use this to make predictions. So for instance, let's suppose that we have an input for the number of cars of being 20, so we have 20 ten thousands. Then we can stick in 20 for x, and now we just have a basic equation to solve. 0 0.11 times 20 plus 0.4 gives us 2.6, so we should expect about 2.6 billion.